Oh, Mr. McGill, I notice all the bushes at the back of the school appear to have died. I take it no one told the new first form where the toilets are located. Oh, <laughs> not again. If you wouldn't mind. I'll get on to it. <laughs> Miss Travis? Mr. Slatt. Mr. Slatt, I have to make a serious complaint. Oh, not now. Go away. Archie McClelland of first year looked up my skirt. Look, I don't have the... <laughs> Good God, really? He did. He absolutely did. Is he all right? <laughs> Mr. Slatt, all the boys in this school need their disgusting obsession with sex cured at once. Well, one down. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, Miss Travis? You. Me? Mr. Slatt, I wonder if you could help me. The janitor's complaining again. It seems the prefect stole all his cigarettes and stuffed them down a urinal. Oh, I take it he's a bit upset, then. Well, apparently he had to throw half of them away. <laughs> <laughs> fine, fine. I'll have a word. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, you were saying? Uh, Mr. Newell of the Geography Department just phoned to say he won't be in. He'll need some work for his class. Uh, why? It's the geography field trip. They're lost. <laughs> Again? Oh, apparently. Is it too much to ask to have a geography department to are the laughing stock of air-sea rescue? <laughs> Jeffrey Wilkins of Four Form, stop looking at that woman's breasts. <laughs> Woman in red coat, please proceed past the school as if nothing had happened. <laughs> Apologies for any embarrassment caused. No need to run. <laughs> <sighs> geography, geography. <laughs> I mean, what am I supposed to do with a geography class anyway? What do they do in geography? What is geography? <laughs> And what are geography teachers doing with their students? I mean, what happens to them? Because you never meet any fully grown ones, do you? You get mathematicians, scientists, historians, musicians, but you never meet any geographers. There's no university of geography, no ministry of geography. No one ever lists amateur geography among their hobbies. None of them ever seem to reach adulthood. They just reach a certain age and vanish from society. What's going on in these classrooms? We should be warning the parents. It's entirely possible their children are being abducted. Or <laughs> they're being recruited into some vast underground army plotting world domination. I mean, have you seen those classrooms? Covered in maps. Today this classroom. Tomorrow the world. Next day, calories in. <laughs> Mr. Travis, what are you doing? Clearing your desk. Why? It's got too many things on it. Oh, oh, right, Mr. Miss, Miss Travis, what, 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 Miss Travis, what are you going to do to me? Everything. <laughs> so... How's bad Bartholomew doing these days? He's gone. Gone? Well, he never really existed. And it's good Bartholomew I'm talking to now? Just Bartholomew. Excellent. And he doesn't hear the voices anymore, do you, dear? No, no not, not for ages. <laughs> Two years and three months, in fact. Well, with the voices gone, and with no sign of the split personality disorder reoccurring, I think it's time Bartholomew got back to school. Can you recommend one? Some <laughs> special? Oh, the more ordinary, the better. What he needs now is to be among normal people. What's your nearest comprehensive? Galfast High School. Well, I'm sure that would do splendidly. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Travis. Oh, hi. Good morning. Looking for Mr. Slatt? No, no, not at all. <laughs> I, I just uh, had a sort of dream about him last night, that's all. Did you really? How extraordinary. Yeah, uh, trust me, it, it was. <laughs> I think I had a dream about Mr. Slatt once. 
No, that was a documentary about Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> no, it was a dream about Mr. Slack. <laughs> Bartholomew, Dr. Gray. Could you wait in my office a moment? Just there. Of course, thank you so much. New pupil. Starts on Mondays. In your English class. Bit of a special case. Perhaps you could have a little chat with him sometime today? Well, sure. Thank you, Miss Travis. Morning, Susie. <clears throat> Morning. You okay? Bad night. Ah. Well, bad dream. Very bad. I see. Woke up in a real sweat. Real sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Dan? Yeah? Stop imagining me naked. Lucky guess. <laughs> Do you ever have a dream of doing the worst thing you can imagine? Just the most revolting, disgusting thing, and in the dream, you're really, really enjoying it. <laughs> and no, I didn't keep any of the sweat. You're good. Dan, I am never going to sleep with you. Just deal with it and get on with your life. Yeah, I know, but what Let me if... be even clearer. Let me be so clear that even you are going to get it. In the event of a freak plague which wiped out all the men in the world except you, and I know not a night goes by without you considering that possibility. <laughs> in that event, Dan, I would go to a sperm bank. <laughs> which one? Let's talk about my dream. Well, um... It's about sex. Sure, no problem. <laughs> Serious question. Have you ever had a dream of having sex with someone you do not find attractive in any way whatsoever? Someone you would be ashamed even to be seen with? No, I don't think so. Oh. Well, generally, I've woken up and it's all been true. <laughs> Actually. Well, so you've had a dream like that? Last night. Sex with someone you wouldn't normally fancy? Someone I in no way find sexually attractive. Interesting. <laughs> Dan? Yep. Wasn't another woman. <laughs> With you in a minute, Susie. You're a very sick man, McGill. Uh, well, I'm not the one dreaming about sleeping with somebody I don't even like. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Nice one. Very discreet. <laughs> As you were. <laughs> <laughs> So who was it? <laughs> In the dream. Is there someone on the staff? Oh, this is exciting, isn't it? It's so romantic. <laughs> Have you people got anything else to think about? Haven't you got lives of your own? Well, uh, not me, obviously. No, no. <laughs> I'm married. No, well, that's that's a stupid don't... question. Look, just get back in the staff room. Go on, shoot, shoot. It wasn't me again, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Jason, who told you I've ever dreamt about sleeping with you? Well, you did. Jason. Last February. Just after the parents' mm. evening. Was that the one that started with Jason and the fire hose? <laughs> <laughs> Was it absolutely necessary to tell everyone about that? I didn't tell everyone. You didn't tell me. There, I didn't tell you. I read it on the wall of the girls' toilets. <laughs> I told you that during a conversation that was entirely private. Didn't you get that? Well, not really, I suppose. <laughs> I was talking about my sex life, and I repeatedly used the words, don't spread it around. Oh, I thought that was the moral of the story. <laughs> so anyway, it wasn't Jason in the dream, then? No, it wasn't. Good. Well, it wasn't you, either. Was it Jeff in business studies again? That wasn't a dream. She actually slept with him. Well, <laughs> poor B says. If you lot think there's the slightest chance of me sharing any personal secrets with any of you ever again, you are tragically mistaken. Live with this, all of you. You'll never, ever know who I dreamed about last night. Ah! Good morning, everyone.
Is there a problem? No, no, no. no. Janet? Yes, darling. Is something wrong? No, no, no. Miss Travis? Yeah, what? Yeah, what's happening? Nothing. Susie was just telling us about a little dream she had, that's all. A dream? It's a dream, yes. Oh, for heaven's sake, not that one about Jason and the fire hose. <laughs> But, uh, Miss Travis, must you always regale the entire staff with every last detail of your erotic dreams? The children will be in here in a moment. Okay. Okay, fine. So, I had an erotic dream last night. If you lot can't deal with that, that's your problem. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry if we're not sufficiently interested in your socialist sex fantasies. I, for one, don't want to be involved. A bit late for that. <laughs> <laughs> well... Since you're all out here, let's press on with the morning briefing. Please. Right. Ah, oh, Mr. Slat, I wonder if I might intrude. Fine, fine, go ahead. If I could interrupt Mr. Slat just this once, I'd like to mention a rather unusual new student we'll be taking on. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, could you excuse me for a moment? Yes, of course. By the way, Mr. Slat, Miss Travis had a dream about you last night. <laughs> <laughs> you mean... You mean she... <laughs> well, that's quite outrageous. I agree. Ah. <laughs> As we should continue this some other time. Carry on, everyone. I've um, got some, you know, pupils to, to talk, talk to. On. Well, let's not be ridiculous. We're talking about a dream here. I'm sure other people here have had dreams about Eric Slatt. Well, haven't you? Well, sometimes. <laughs> Maybe once. Now and then. <laughs> well, just a dream, you know. Not an erotic dream, just a dream. What's the problem, Janet? I'm sure everyone here would agree nothing could be more unlikely than your husband and me. Well? Nothing could be more unlikely. What did you mean by that? I haven't said anything. Yeah, well, what did you mean by it? Susie, think about it. What other junior teacher in this school can get away with storming into my husband's office any time she feels like it and telling him off? You do it all the time. Without a single reprimand. Who is it that always digs him out of trouble after he's dug himself right in? Why do you bother? Well, I'm just, you know, trying to help. What are you trying to say? You know, I've always thought you two were a little bit similar. What? Well, you are, in a way. Definitely. No way am I anything like Eric Slatt. Oh, come on, Susie. Why do you think Dan fancies you so much? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> OK, fine. But the difference, the, the big difference between me and your husband is that I know when to stop. Mr. Slat? Miss Travis. OK, so I had a major erotic dream about having wild and crazy sex with you in a number of borderline legal ways. <laughs> but now that your entire staff knows about it, can we please let it go no further? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh. Typing, eh? It's marvellous. It's amazing how you women can type. I mean, not that women are only good for typing, obviously. I, I just mean that you're so much better at it than us. Must be your fingers. They're more supple. <laughs> Must be all that washing up. <laughs> Not that women are only for typing and washing up, of course not. You know, I personally am a big admirer of women. <laughs> because, you know, 
They can do so many things that men can't. Lots and lots of things. I mean, they, um, they can, um, they, they can, um, produce milk. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Now think of the potential savings. Who needs dairies? We could just farm women. <laughs> Though obviously you, you, you're much more to me than just a cheaper kind of cow. <laughs> Eric. Yes, dear? That actually is the nicest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> oh. Oh, good. No. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking about earlier and um, how you were a bit upset and everything and, well... I spent all morning making this diagram of why it definitely isn't my fault. Dear God, and Eric, it's the London Underground. Well, yes, similar, but I had to use two more colours. Now, that's Miss Travis, and that's me. Obviously, not to scale, but I was in a hurry. And uh, as you can see from the labelling, these two lines represent repressed desire and erotic dreams going towards me not from me, while well, this line looping round here is blame, and look at that, it's pointing straight at Miss Travis, yes, just where it says, whose dream was it anyway? <laughs> and for clarity, I've added these clearly marked lines for paranoia, anxiety, and self-loathing, which I, I think puts... Go away, uh, Eric, just go away. Oh, take those away, obviously nothing's going to work. It's Miss Travis's fault, it's perfectly obvious. Look at that psychotic, emotional subsystem. <laughs> you have paid for these anyway. Oh, right, OK. I'll take them up to learning difficulties. They're going to have a graze. <laughs> Look, it's perfectly obvious whose fault it is, isn't it? I blame the teachers. Oh, yes. Oh, very amusing. Right, Miss Travis. Miss Travis. Miss Travis. Miss Travis. Are you Mr. Slat? Yes, yes. I I'm Bartholomew. I'm a new student starting on Monday. Well, good Bartholomew. Now, I just have to... No, uh... not good Bartholomew. What? Or oh, bad Bartholomew. I'm... They've both gone now. I'm just Bartholomew now. <laughs> right. Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me, uh, I have to talk to Miss Travis. All right, of course, sorry. Uh, that's all right. Uh, sorry, Miss Travis. <laughs> those, um, those are uh, flowers, actually. Right, yes. Uh, I knew that. Of oh, good. <laughs> I used to have a lot of problems with flowers. Now I just ignore them. Good, good. Because they don't know what they're talking about anyway. <laughs> Anyway, I have to go and reprimand someone for irresponsible dreaming. Oh, uh, Mr. Kennedy said there was a map of the school. He said I could have a look around. Oh, yes, over there, over there. Um, where? Should tell you everything. All right, got it. Are you all right? Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm... Just looking at the school's layout. Hmm. It's just like home. <laughs> Miss Travis. Miss Travis. The last time, Dan. I'm not going to have an affair with Eric Slat. <laughs> so can you stop going on about it, please? Yeah, well, let's face it, who started it? Well, that's not a good reason to keep fueling the rumour with the kids. Yeah, and who started that? Can you please just drop it? Just someone in your room? No, no, so. That'll be all then. Sure. OK. What are you doing? Miss Travis, there are a few things I have to put you straight on and you're not going to like any of it. <laughs> <laughs> These flowers are not for you. And that's just for starters. Out. <laughs> now, listen. If Dan McGill finds you skulking around my classroom with a bunch of flowers, 
Have you any idea what happens then? And can you just imagine that for a moment? But this isn't my fault. I didn't have the dream. I didn't announce it over the tannoy. <laughs> All I actually did was buy some flowers for my wife. Just this one lousy time. Nothing is my fault. Well, it's not my fault either. I just had a dream. You know, if your staff could, could, could control themselves... <laughs> well, exactly. Do you know what they're saying? <laughs> Do you realise what they're saying? Oh, now? what? <laughs> they're saying that you and I are similar people. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, of course it is. We're, we're, we're enemies. You know, we hate each other. We are in no sense even remotely similar. <laughs> Trust me, I have been trying to explain all morning. Look. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are. Absolutely nothing <laughs> in common. And we're the only ones who can see it. <laughs> OK, it's not my fault, it's not your fault. But can you just imagine what it's going to look like if anyone finds us in this room together? Good point. Thanks. Well, I'll, uh, I'll just go then, shall I? Good idea. <laughs> but it's not my fault, though, is it? Uh, this once. <laughs> <laughs> not my fault! Here it is. I was looking for Miss Travis. <laughs> so was I. <laughs> She's not here. She's gone home. She just felt so sorry about the whole thing. And she left these for you. Well, I'm glad someone thought to do that. Now, I found young Bartholomew here looking a little confused. He's a new student. Mr. Kennedy said he should be having a chat with Miss Travis about now. Well, I'll do the chat. That's why I'm up here. I'm taking over on the chat front. But following you. Come in, come in. Take a seat by the desk, please. So, uh, I'll just have a chat with Bartholomew. So, Bartholomew, how's it going? <laughs> well, fine. I'm just a bit confused about the school's layout. Well, it can take a bit of time to get to know the place. Now, tell me, what would you say your top subjects are? What areas are your files tracking? Well, I'm best in art and history. Mm -hmm. And I used to really like technical subjects, but I, I got into a bit of trouble because of all the sharp things. Sharp things? But well, that's not a problem anymore. Right, on you go, room 20. Bartholomew, oh, I'll just get you a school prospectus so you can have a look at it. Is Miss Travis here? Here's the prospectus. I think you'll find it interesting. Oh, you were saying your favourites are art and history. Oh, hi. Hi. What, what happened to the other one? Other one? There's just you and me, Bartholomew. Oh, right. Look, just wanted to apologise for uh, a minute ago. I, I was getting a bit uh, carried away. No problem. Don't worry about it. Yeah, well, you know, sorry. Forget it. Great. Now, that may have been just a little confusing. No, no, I'm fine. You are? Are you calling yourself Miss Travis now? Well, yes. Oh, Mr. McGill? Yeah. Oops. Drop the pencil. Oh, I have a quick word. Oh, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, dear. Still having a chat with Bartholomew. So I see. How's it going, Bartholomew? Fine. Right. There you are. It's fine. Everything's fine. So, uh, what can I do for you? Well, just a little problem with the school reports you've been writing. Apparently, they're all identical. Ah. <laughs> well, a lot of my pupils are, in fact, uh, terribly similar. <laughs> no, wait, please. Susan? Eric? Here we all are. And how's Bartholomew getting along? Are you all right, Bartholomew? Dr. Gray's been treating Bartholomew for the last few years. I'm really just here to check the stability of the school environment, so I was one. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> just, 
uh, having a word with Miss Travis. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just a word. Sex or anything. <laughs> so, Miss Travis, I, uh, I think that about completes our business. Let's uh, call it a day at that, eh? <laughs> oh, so, can I help at all? <laughs> I think perhaps you and I should have a little chat. Certainly. Oh. Perhaps you'd uh, care to come under the desk. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, Bartholomew? It's not possible. It can't happen. What can't happen? These two can't be in the same room at the same time. What do you mean? Why not? Well... Well... She's just him in a dress. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Mr. McGill. A number of first formers have chained themselves to railings to protest about the firing of Mr. Cavendish. So, what do you want me to do? Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Miss Travis, excellent. Would you mind following me into my office? <laughs> well, as you probably know, Bartholomew will be joining us here, despite a recurrence of some of his mental problems. On the bright side, however, I did include all his personalities on the school roll and we qualified for a new chemistry teacher. <laughs> also, now that this ridiculous fuss concerning you and I has died down... Miss Travis, you've just handcuffed me. Yes, I know. Miss Travis, you must stop having these dreams about me. Boy, are you in for a shock. <laughs> <laughs> when a nightmare becomes reality, BBC One has the modelling assignment from hell. The Covergirl Murders is next.